Hello traders and welcome to Stock Goodies Chart School. Average True Range or ATR was developed by J. Wells Wilder and it's an indicator that measures volatility. It is not a directional indicator like the MACD or the RSI is. It is a unique volatility indicator that reflects the degree of interest or disinterest in a move. So let's go ahead and load up the ATR on this chart for DLIA here on StockCharts.com. First thing you'll do is scroll down to the bottom in the indicators area, click on this box and select Average True Range ATR. Now the standard parameter is 14, so on a daily chart this would be a look back period of 14 days. Go ahead and click on update and here is the ATR. It is a single line. Now the value of the ATR totally depends upon the price of the stock. A stock under $2 is going to have an ATR at about 0.1. A stock in the $3 range has an ATR closer to 0.2. A stock in the $450 range has an ATR closer to 0.3. A stock in the $12 range has an ATR in the range of about 0.35. Then you get to the more expensive stocks like Amazon in the $300 range and you will see an ATR reading of about 5.5 and then Google at over $900 has an ATR reading just over 14. Strong moves in either direction are often accompanied by large ranges or large true ranges and this is especially true at the beginning of a move. Uninspiring moves can be accompanied by relatively narrow ranges. So, the ATR can be used to validate the enthusiasm behind a move or breakout. A bullish reversal with an increase in ATR would show strong buying pressure and reinforce the reversal. A bearish support break with an increase in ATR would show strong selling pressure and reinforce the support break. Now let's go ahead and look at how the ATR works. Okay, remember it is an indicator that measures volatility. And as you can see right here, there was absolutely no volatility on this chart as the stock traded between about a dollar and a dollar twenty or even a dollar ten. So ATR goes down. There is no volatility in this range. Then on this little spike up that broke above all that resistance, there was more volatility. Okay. Then it went into another period of consolidation with very little volatility. And when it broke below all of this support, it fell like a rock and volatility picked up. Okay. This is where the bulls take over at the bottom here which has pretty good volume. Okay, on the first spike up, it had increased volatility. Then it pulled back, okay, and consolidated and then broke out to new highs on even better volume and volatility here was greater than it was back here. Okay, so this is higher than that. This high is higher than that high, which is good. That shows there was a lot of volatility, some strength to the volatility here. Okay, then it goes into another period of consolidation and forms a triangle chart pattern. Volume falls off at the end of the chart pattern and then right here it starts to pick up as it gets ready to break out above the resistance right here. And it does that on very good volume and volatility picks up as it breaks out to new highs above everything on this chart it's above all resistance into blue sky territory okay then it consolidates again right here it's not a all that volatile but then on this big move up here on huge volume it breaks out into blue sky territory above all levels of resistance 
on volume and volatility picks up. Now let's take a look at SOL and how ATR works. Right here in this area there was no volatility. It was running virtually flat and then it breaks out above this area of resistance on pretty good volume and volatility picks up. Then it forms a bearish double top chart pattern that's shaped like an M with neckline support right here and when it breaks below this level of support it falls hard and volatility picks up. Okay, then it goes through a period of consolidation right here where it forms a bullish double bottom chart pattern and just barely breaks above it here but volume really wasn't strong enough in this area to be that convincing. So ATR goes down. It doesn't really go up until it breaks above this double area of resistance right here and breaks out to new highs above this. So volatility really picks up. Now there's a couple of gaps right here. So that's one reason volatility went up is gaps are more volatile than just straight moves. So it gapped up at the open this day. It gapped up at the open again this day and formed a reversal candlestick called a long-legged doji and it sent the stock back down. Back to this area of resistance where it made its support. And Again, very little volatility in this area, so ATR goes down. When it finally breaks above all of this resistance right here, volume starts picking up, and on the day it gaps up at the open and breaks above all resistance and closes at a high up here in blue sky territory, the volume was huge, okay? And ATR takes off. There's another gap up at the open right here, and ATR surges again on the gap. Now, because of the tall upper wick on this candlestick right here, there's and because it's so vertical and a gap needs to be filled right here, I would expect that to be a reversal signal on this stock. But volume was pretty good that day. It could be another day of profit taking. This was the volume that sent it skyrocketing. This could have been profit taking volume that day. Now here's an example of how ATR measures the volatility of gaps. This day right here that formed a beautiful hammer with a long lower wick and virtually no body was a gap down at the open over this day's close right here. So volatility goes up. ATR has a huge spike, sets new highs for this time period on the chart. And that's just on a gap. Now here's another gap up from 10 to about almost $12 on that gap up at the open on huge volume. Could have been caused by good news or, or a good earnings report. But look at ATR. Sets new highs on the chart showing that that was an extremely volatile move.